What's going on guys? Thanks for coming back for part two. In this video, we're gonna be replacing the brake booster here on the 2008 Jeep Wrangler. Um, if you saw part one, you already know all about it, but I kinda have to recap if you're catching this video and you didn't watch part one. So basically it has a bad brake booster. You hit the brake like this. It doesn't take very much to engage the brake, but check this out. I'm gonna push it in a little bit. Hopefully you can hear that. and today I'm going to show you how to uh, pull that out and replace it with a remanufactured one. Um, this is going to be a guide pretty much for 2008 all the way to 2011. Uh, after 11, things kind of change a little bit. Okay, under the hood, things are a little bit different. Uh, under the dash here, things are the same. Um, unless yours is manual, this one's automatic. Um, be a little bit different. If yours is manual, it's a little bit more work, um, but it won't be too bad. Uh, but yeah, 12 and up is a little bit different because it has a different engine, okay? And the dash is a little different, but it doesn't, the dash has nothing to do with anything, really. But, uh, yeah, um, brake booster's bad, it's leaking, you can, you can hear it, um, you can hear it leak when you press on the brake pedal. We're going to change it today. Um, here's a little tip, uh, take the door off your Wrangler, it's going to make it a whole lot easier, okay? So we're going to take a look at the new one. Okay, so I got this remanufactured one here, it's like 150 bucks. Um, it has some pretty good reviews on Amazon. I got it on Amazon because, you know, I didn't have time. It was just easy, okay? And it was the same thing they sell in the parts store. As far as, you know, this one goes, it comes with everything we need, okay? It's been remanufactured, but it actually will come with a new seal for your master cylinder, which is pretty good, which is pretty cool. And this is all you pretty much need right here, okay? And this is the part we're looking at under the hood, check valve, and this is the part that this is the part that connects to your brake pedal here. So here's a little tip. It's always good to get the part that you're about to throw on the car and take a look at it. So uh, if you don't know how to replace whatever you're doing, um, the new part will actually kind of show you what you're kind of looking at. You know, you got some studs here, you got some studs on the back side of it. Um, this is the part that connects to the brake pedal. You get a good little idea. Which okay, so here's what we got. We got the brake master cylinder. We're gonna need to disconnect from the booster. Uh, first thing we want to do is we're going to take loose the vacuum line here. Okay, all you got to do is just twist it and pull it right off. Simple. We're going to move it back. Now you're going to want to inspect this line to see if it has any cracks or anything like that. This one's still good. Even with 207,000 miles, it's still good. All right. Pretty cool. Let's get this guy out of the way a little bit. All this is going to kind of get in the way, so get ready. Um, next thing is, is the master cylinder. We're going to need to disconnect from the booster. Uh, it has two uh, nuts. That hold it on they are uh, 13 millimeter okay you're gonna just take those nuts off and we're gonna move this guy out of the way this way we're gonna be able to look inside the booster and uh hopefully there's no brake fluid in the booster okay because if there's brake fluid in that booster that means this master cylinder is taking a crap which not too cool because i really don't like doing these okay especially with this jeep because if you replace the master cylinder you have to bleed the ABS, which is, this is the ABS right here. And to bleed the ABS, you need a scan tool. You just can't do it in your garage. Um, you can try and try and try to bleed the brakes, uh, but you'll never be able to do it without a scan tool, okay? You can't get all, because you can't get all the air out of this. So hopefully this thing's cool. But those two nuts, and then we'll head into the car to deal with that. So having some ratcheting wrenches, it's really going to help you out, out here, make things a lot easier. One, and then two right back here. All right, so here's number two. Now to make this a little bit easier, uh, the ABS module here, if I go ahead and take it loose also, it's going to help me in making all these lines able to move because we're going to have to squeeze this guy out of here. So I'm going to take this 10 millimeter out of here and uh, make this work and move so it's nice and easier for me to work and not get so frustrated. Now this thing is freaking sick, man. If you want a, you know, a really nice electric ratchet, these Milwaukee's, man, they're the best. All right, so I got a couple 10 millimeters that hold this whole tray in I took out, and it holds the washer bottle, the computer, and the ABS module. Bolt, 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 uh, bolt right here. 
and that's it it's nice and loose to take it out you'd have to really disassemble everything i just i just need some more wiggle room i need it to be able to move these lines to be able to move you just can't take the abs module uh, off the tray there's a bolt actually that goes underneath it um that you could unbolt and get it to move so there's a bolt here on the side it's a 10 millimeter also and there's one underneath so instead of doing all that you can just get all the ones on the top because uh, you know i really don't feel like going underneath the car it kind of sucks but if you look right here you can grab the master and start wiggling it off and you can kind of see what we're working with here okay and how much clearance we got so this this really really helped out right here okay and then you can see that on the back of the master cylinder there is a rubber seal right here and uh, we're going to be replacing that but when it goes bad this whole thing will leak will leak vacuum okay this check valve goes bad it'll leak vacuum the seal goes bad it'll leak vacuum but i'm pretty sure that the booster has an internal leak and hopefully we can see that when i get it out but got it all loose here and got a little bit of brake fluid on there which is normal that means this guy is leaking a little bit in there which is okay i just hope i don't see the booster full of brake fluid because that's gonna just kind of suck okay so the booster itself is bolted to the a bracket and the bracket is bolted to the firewall so your next step is going to be is you're going to have to pull these wires out of your way and there's going to be these little uh, I don't know what you want to call these, like retainers that help the, they hold the wire against this stud. Okay, that's what they do. And you're going to have to take out four of these uh, 13 millimeter uh, nuts that you got here. So there's one there, there's one over here, there's one below it down there. Let's see if I can. Down there. Uh, I don't know if you can see it or not, but that one is going to be extremely fun. It's down there somewhere. And there's another one. Is. Let's see if we get the camera down there. It's down over here, okay? So there's four of these guys in each four corners. You're gonna have to get those loose next. Uh, my only recommendation is, is uh, so yeah, you're gonna use, you know, 13 millimeter wrench, 13 millimeter ratchet, whatever you got that's gonna be able to get into these corners the easiest, okay? There's one, two. Continuous autofocus, bitch. Eye autofocus is not on. What's, what's going on here? Three. Four. All right, now it's time to separate the bracket from the firewall before we go inside the truck. Just get yourself uh, the biggest flathead screwdriver you have and you're gonna have to take it stick it in there and convince it loosen it up okay get it nice and loose okay you might have to actually i had to get a little hammer out kind of hammered in a little bit just to get it in there and work it loose a little bit okay and after you get it loose like that then we'll go inside and disconnect the brake pedal and then work on getting this booster out yeah. what we're gonna need to do first is we're gonna need to disconnect the brake pedal from the uh, the rod that you have here, and it uses this clip. Now, I've had some bad luck with these clips before where I've broken them, okay? So hopefully I don't do that today. But after we get this clip off, we'll be able to uh, pretty much disconnect it, disconnect the booster from the pedal. But it, it, uh, it comes off a certain way. You have to like unclip it and push it. And they're made not to come loose, you know, because it is a safety thing. So they're on there pretty good. And they got it popped right off. All right, now we're gonna need to get the master cylinder out of the way. We're gonna have to try to kind of bend it out. This is nice and loose. This is the fun part of all this. This is the part I've been, I've been just dreaming about right here. Right? Just, just, okay, just gonna pull it. Okay. And if you look, I'm gonna grab the camera real quick. If you look, you gotta get all this past that. Okay. And then we're gonna bend it out of the way that way. Okay. Put you back right where you were. Where were you? 
something like that. Alright, just bend them out of the way. And we don't want to bend those brake lines too much. Okay, they will bend quite a bit, but we don't want to get them all screwed up. Oh, and then it's got this level sensor here I forgot to unplug. Undo the safety clip, pull it. It's going to give me a little bit more room too. Okay, bend it this way. Now if you have a bungee cord, you could bungee this over there to help you, but I don't think I'm going to need it. Just kind of bend them out of the way there. All right. I'm going to have to just work on getting this bracket nice and loose. Okay. All right, so here we go. We're going to fight this guy right out. Um, she's ready to come right out. Trying to get some of this out of the way. Nice and loose. All right, you ready? All I can say is just take your time. Stay calm. What's going to make this tricky is that rod is sticking out so far into the car. Got to get that past the firewall. That's all good. But as you can see here, there's brake fluid in this thing, which means is that master is leaking, but it's pretty normal, I guess. But um, I don't know when I'm going to end up changing the master again. I really don't want to, but look, brake fluid. We'll, we'll find out how much brake fluid is actually in the bottom of this. Oh, and this is the spot for your slave cylinder if you're driving manual. So if you have a manual, it's just a little bit more work where you're going to have to unbolt it also, okay? Not much different. It's just a little bit more work. Alright, got our old master right here with the bra bracket. That's what it looks like in the back of it. A little bit of what would you call this? A little sound dampening, probably that's what that is, a little bit of foam. Okay. So then you got the little 13 millimeters here. Whoa, look at all the brake fluid just came pouring out of this thing. Whoa, gotta clean that up real quick. So it says here with the new one that it will void your warranty if your master cylinder is leaking. So whatever. There's definitely some brake fluid left in it. And it's probably not good for the seals. Let's see how it's starting to rust at the bottom. The rust at the bottom is a good indicator. All right guys, so what do you guys think so far? Not too bad? Um, let me know in the comments what you think so far of the video. You know, what you think about uh, about this repair here, you know? Curious to know. But we're just gonna smash this bitch right back in and Put it all back together and I'll, I'll show you, I'll see if I can show you how this master is leaking, where it's leaking from here in a second. put all those four nuts back on there and then uh, the master here uh, I'm gonna replacing the seal that's on the back of this but I'm gonna see if I can show you where it's actually leaking at where it leaks it's kind of hard to get the camera back there but I can do it all right so if you notice that your brake fluid is disappearing a lot and you think your master is leaking it's actually probably leaking right down in here okay you can see that's kind of oily in there too all right 
But I think some of this, since it's so black, it might actually might be motor oil from this, uh, this intake line right here. So I don't really know. The, the crankcase vapors and all that, but, but this is where this mess was leaking. On the old one, it's right down in there. But this seal right here, we're gonna have to replace this seal, okay? And then we're also gonna put some dielectric grease on there too. You don't want to use any type of like gear, uh, like wheel bearing grease or anything like that. Use dielectric or some like a silicone based grease. Like um, it's made for brake parts, okay? Uh, if you use like wheel bearing grease or anything like that, it might swell the rubber up and then you're gonna be in big, 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 big trouble, okay? I'll show you what I'm gonna use. You get the four uh, bracket nuts put it back on there and then I'll hook the brake pedal back up and put the master back on and I'll show you the seal that's what I'm gonna show you okay and then wrap everything up should be good to go all right so here's the seal on the master cylinder and go ahead and pull this guy right off all right not the best angle sorry I'm gonna clean off this surface real quick clean off some of this oil all right New seal, put it on there, all right. All right, now I'm gonna end up using this. This is 3M silicone paste on the seal. Um, that's the one I put it back, it doesn't rip, okay? And I wanna use this because it's gonna be safe on brake parts rubber, all right? It's not gonna like swell up the rubber, it's not gonna make it uh, fall apart, you know, premature or anything like that. This stuff does, it's really good for, you know, not causing you any issues later but uh you can use it on spark plug wires you know it's just it's good stuff just put a little bit right there i'll just wipe it around with my finger just grease up that seal real quick all right then we're going to line this hole up with the rod that's coming out of the booster Now that we got that like that, I want to make sure that the seal is sealing down there, that it's not sticking out all wacky or anything. Push it on there a couple times. Make sure it's all good. It's all good. Okay, then you put the two nuts back on. Then uh, I can go ahead and hook up this vacuum line right now. Alright, nut one. Guys, we got this thing all buttoned up. Let's go ahead and uh, start it up and see what we got. Take a listen at the pedal. See, uh, see if we got the brakes back. All right, I don't hear any hissing. Feels pretty good. Need to go on a test drive to see what's up. But before I can put it in gear. It just feel like there was no power at all, like the engine wasn't even on or anything like that. Yeah, it feels feels great. Need to go on a test drive to verify that it's it's all good and that the the brake switch still works back there with the brake lights or anything like that. It can get out of adjustment a little bit when you mess with the uh, mess with the rod and mess with the uh, the pedal itself. Well, I hope the video was uh, was helpful. If it was, you know, do me a favor, hit that thumbs up. Uh, if you want to see some more Jeep stuff, you know, hit that subscribe, turn notifications on. Uh, next couple videos will be on this guy here. Uh, the next one will be me rebuilding the front drive shaft. Uh, the joint up there is done. All right, you can hear it just grinding away. Uh, basically, the boot that holds uh, one of the little joints up there, it ripped. The grease flew out of it. I knew it flew out of it a long time ago, and uh, I just let it kind of just go, go, go. And now, got to rebuild that whole thing. So that'll be the next video. Uh, the one after that will be probably the ignition switch. Um, that is a preventative video uh, you probably really want to do that if you own a JK um, 2008 2011 uh, I'm not too sure if the switch is the same for the 12 and up it might be it probably is but the dash looks a little bit different this is the old dash but uh, that will prevent that's a little bit of insurance so you don't get stranded somewhere and then uh, after that might be doing something to the rear bumper 
needs a different carrier because the gate is about to fall off. That's a common problem if you have a JK. You guys know that. And that's pretty much it. I don't know what else. There's something else. There's something else I gotta do to this thing. It's making some kind of weird noise over there. I'll figure that out later. Uh, yeah. Hope you enjoyed the video. You guys take care. Be safe. Have a great weekend. Later.